Hi, in this video I'm going to use vector shapes to create some cool logos and this is one I just made uh, for my own website uh, for rickwhitephotography.com and uh, so the idea is to make something like this which is actually this. So let's get started. Blank sheet here and what I'm going to do is first click um, on my rulers which I already have on but to do that just go to view and rulers and then you can push control click and change it to percent or pixels or inches or whatever you want I like percent so then I'm going to drag one down if you hold down the shift button it will go in increments of one so 50 percent and 50 percent just so I have a center so then what I'm going to do is Let's go over to our vector shapes here and press control and you can get your ellipse tool. Just go right to the center and drag out. If you push alt or option that will center it. And If you push shift along with that it will make it into a circle which is what I want. And then just let go and you should get a black circle assuming your foreground is black which is what I want then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the rounded rectangle tool I'll go to the center again and I won't hold down option or shift again I'll just drag out until I can get to the side of the circle and to the top of the circle that looks about right okay click my move tool I'm gonna to move this out of the way both of these guidelines out of the way for a second just so I can check that looks pretty good almost looks like I might have yeah a little bit okay so I'm gonna move it over just one pixel click on the background maybe one more yeah that looks good let's go check the top that one already looks good okay so let's zoom back out put our guidelines back in place okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna zoom into this corner and I'm going to click this tool here, the pen tool, or you can just push P. I'm going to go up here and click on subtract from shape. I'm going to try and round out this edge. So click as close as you can on both sides. Make sure it try and goes down into a 45 degree angle. Sorry, I was on the background, I can see need to be on my rectangle so again it's a good mistake to do because that's oftentimes frustrating why isn't it working well it's because you're on the wrong layer so I'm a little bit off here as I zoom in so I'm gonna go and I just push control or command and that should give me control of that point right there so now it looks pretty good this one is already pretty good okay so now what I'm going to do is grab the push uh, control here again and go to add anchor point. I want to try and go right into the center of this spot. It's about right there. I don't have to be exact. And then just click and drag it out. And you can drag these handles here to make it sort of rounded in different ways, but I want it to be symmetric as possible. So I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's zoom out. That's a rounded edge. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging this rectangle. Copy it. So now I've got two of them. I'm going to put one of them in free transform by pushing Command or Control T. Now you can see here that this center uh, spot, if I could drag that over, that's sort of your axis of rotation. Just drag it down to the center of the circle. Go out here and then you can drag it down here. And I want 180 so I can actually just go right here and type in 180 and then push OK. So I don't even need my guidelines anymore. So clear guidelines. Click on your background to see how you did. You can see here there's slight mistake 
as I zoom in here. Um, so I'll just click on that top one and move it over slightly. Put it in free transform, Command T. Move it over a bit, move it up. Press the check mark. Click on the background. Still a little bit off. I think I'll just go one more pixel. Okay. Click on the background. Zoom out. That looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these three. So just highlight the top one, press shift, highlight that third one, and then let's go up to uh, layer merge shapes. So it'll, it'll keep it as a shape, which is nice. So then click on your object, doesn't matter actually, go into channels, and I'm going to try and highlight this object. Actually, I don't even think I need to do this. What I'm going to do is just go right here to my quick selection tool and just select it. No, nope, that's not working. All right, let's just go to channels. I'll show you in channels. Okay, uh, so go into channels, hold down command. You see this little square come up as you go over the, the image? and just press down. And you can see it automatically highlights it, but it actually highlights the white part. So you can see that the little marching ants are around the outside as well. So go and select inverse. And now you'll just have the marching ants around our shape. Go into layers, and I want to transform the selection. So go to select transform selection. So I don't want to transform the shape, transform the selection. Press shift and alt or option at the same time so that it goes in from the center and it keeps it the same size. Okay, that's about right. Press the check mark. And now I want to make this inside white. To do that, you can just press your layer mask there. It did the opposite, so I need to invert it by pushing Command or Control I to invert it. You can see here that this is black, a black surrounding and a white center. I want it white surrounding and a black center. So Command or Control I, and that'll do it. Press your background, and then there's your shape. So now I want to duplicate it. So drag it down, duplicate it. Press, put it in free transform, command T, drag this point down here to the corner, and then rotate it. 90 degrees. Okay. And then drag it in, shift. That's about right, right there. Let's get him a little bit closer. How about right there? Okay. That looks pretty good. That actually looks like kind of a cool logo as it is. But I'm going to make the inside. Hollow again. Okay, so actually it looks like a little too low. Let's do a guideline. Guideline right there which means this one looks a little bit too low. Okay, that looks about right. All right, so let's turn this one off. Let's go into our channels again. Command, you see the little box? There it is. Invert it. So I just have this piece. And then select, transform selection. Make sure you hold shift and option or alt at the same time. Actually, let's turn this one on so I can see how. Um, I think that I can eyeball it. OK, that looks about right. And then click. Let's 
Let's get rid of this layer mask. Click our layer mask and invert. And now you have both of them. So there's our shape. If I highlight both of them again and go into merge shapes, Didn't like that. I think I can drag them both anyways if I'm highlighted them. There we go. Okay. There. So now I need some text. And I won't go into this much in too much detail, but great website. There's a couple of them out there. Urbanfonts.com. You can just go and pick a font. I think I picked uh, I'm not sure, but I'll just show you. Um, I have not picked this font before, so let's go to, I kind of like this one. Yeah, so go to download. As it downloads here, it's already done. And you can go to your downloads. You can see it's here. and it will automatically just click install font and there it goes you can see it's right there Alberto and if I go into Photoshop go into text click right there and there it is it's already there our white and so that's in general uh, what I what I did I messed around with the text quite a bit um, one of the things you can do is just uh, click this a button here the character button and that gives you a lot of control do the scrubby here and make it bigger you can put it in free transform to move it around and you can make the the letters further to, uh, apart or closer together. All sorts of options here. So play around with that. Uh, the fonts that I used were called, let's see here, what were they called? The fonts I used are Monaco with a K. I also downloaded this Neo Geo and I feel like there was one more. Oh, it was called Secret, Secret Code. So those are the ones that I created and I ended up with this logo and I threw it on to uh, this background which I found online. I'll show you what I did. Uh, let's drag it in there. So grab your move tool, just pick it up, drop it right in there. Way too big so put it into free transform, command T and shift make sure it scales the right way put it in the spot you want press the check mark and then I added a kind of a cool drop shadow so go to drop shadow um, and the distance I made to be kind of large something like that and then I s spread it uh, that's there so the size played with a little bit as well that's all I did. So enjoy it. It's uh, it's kind of hard to learn these vector techniques, but uh, it's obviously kind of cool. You can make all sorts of things. Uh, another one that I was working on, something like this with the mountains. I'm a big mountain guy, so uh, but I was just tons of possibilities, infinite possibilities. Hopefully, you can produce something something like this. Good luck.